Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to give you my best secret for shooting straight into the sun for golden hour and sunset, shooting and retouching. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Armini. I'm a French photographer from the beautiful, the incroyable, the amazing, the everlasting city of Paris, France. And I make one to two tutorials per week. Now, in this episode, I'm going to give you for free nine raw files from the view of the Galerie Lafayette, of the Opéra Garnier, of the Eiffel Tower of Paris. Nine raw files that makes this photo. All you have to do to get it is signing on my website, you put in your email address, you confirm it, you log in. And if you click the link below this video, you can access to a special page, but it will only work if you are logged into my website. All right. So, also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get a notification whenever I put a new video out. For this, mesdames and messieurs, let's go to Paris and to LA and to different places and let me show you my best secret for shooting straight into the sun for golden hour and sunset. All right, guys, just before we get started, I just want to let you know that I got five seats left on my coaching with Serge Romelli, Photo Search Academy. Uh, it was reserved for 25 students. I've signed up 20. I have five more seats. And the first one comes, uh, the first ones who are going to get it. The way it works is that I'm going to give you 40 assignments. And, uh, you know, like golden hour shots, uh, lone exposure, uh, doing black and white, doing HDR panorama, astrophotography. That's optional if, if you want it. Uh, doing, you know, uh, night photography, sunset photography, uh, panoramas. I'm going to give you all these assignments and I'm going to coach you on every single photo. And you have to pass all 40 and then you get a diploma. All right, let's jump into today's tutorial. I want to talk to you about this photo and I want to talk to you about shooting in the sun. Uh, why I want to talk to you about that because I was getting, I started getting a lot of photos from my students and I see a mistake that's coming over and over when they, they shoot directly into the sun where the sun is not really nice, it's very defined and uh, but first I want to give you a little bit of the history of this photo. This photo was taken from the terrace of the Galerie Lafayette in Paris. Uh, it's a department store. If you go to Paris, you've got to go there because you got this view. This is the view of the opera and you've got to go there at sunset and this is the Eiffel Tower. The pr and I actually, I only had my Sony A7S on me that day and uh, I wanted to make sure I had everything. I didn't have my tripod. I forgot my tripod because tripods are actually a lot up there. But I forgot my tripod. so. I wanted to shoot an HDR by hand and I wanted to get the sunset really right, the sun. It's not really a sunset yet. I call this like a golden hour. Sunset is when the sun is a little bit lower, I would say. It's almost the beginning of sunset, let's put it this way. So here it was very dark on the left and here it was very bright on the right. So what I did is I put my camera into manual mode and I set it to 1 400 of a second at F10 ISO 100 for the normal shot. Okay, the reason I did that is because if you set your camera when you don't have a tripod at um, one two fifty of a second minimum, that's the minimum you have to go to, then with the minus two f stop, you're going to be a very high speed, 1600, because faster is your shutter speed, less light is coming in, and so that's minus two. And then the plus two, the plus two is f stop is 100 of a second. Now, one 100 of a second, I know I can still have a sharp photo with uh you know shooting by hand if i was lower than that like 150 of a second i might get a blurry shot in my overexposed photo and so for example uh the way f-stop works is that this is normally so exposure at one four hundred of a second okay if you want to if i want to add two f-stop to this okay uh to make it or actually sorry uh yeah make it a little brighter so i have to add two f-stops then you take 400 of a second, you divide it by two. That's 200, that's one f-stop. And you divide 200 by, by two again, by, by, by two, that's 100. So that's how, that's why you come from one 400 to 100. So, but if your normal photo is at 100 of a second, if you divide 100 by two, you get 50. If you divide 50 by two, you get 125. That means your overexposed photo is going to be at 125 a second, and there's a good chance that it's going to be blurry. So if you want to do, 
don't want to go into the mathematical things of things, just remember, you can do HDR by hand, but your speed's got to be at minimum 1 to 50 of a second. You've, you've got to take all three shots, one after the other. You can do this on your camera. You can Google Surge Remedy, how to set up an HDR camera on, on YouTube, and I'll show you how to do that. Anyways, so that's the first shot, three exposure shot in manual mode. Then that's the, the second series of shots, so that's one photo, two photo, three photo. I was moving a lot actually between the shots. And that's the third photo. So one photo, two photo, three photo. Okay, now what I did then is I, I selected the first three photos. I right click, I went into Photo Merge HDR. So I'm using this new option that came out with Lightroom CC to make an HDR. All I do as an option is I click Auto Align. I don't do any deghosting. Deghosting is when there is like people walking and in this case, there was nothing. There was not much movement between all three photos. And I click on merge. Now I've already done that to save you some time. That's the merge result. And if you look at it, the title is called Untitled 134 HDR DNG. So it's still a DNG file. It's still a raw file, but now it's got all the dynamic range of these three raw files. Crazy. <laughs> so the first one is one, two, and three. And this is the HDR version. To make it clear, I put it in red. So I right click and I said color label red, so you can see it's red here. So then I did the same thing with the next three shots, one, two, and three, and in red, you have the HDR of the three shots. Then one, two, and three, and, uh, and this one in red uh, with the HDR, okay? Then once I did that, I took all three reds photo, which is just the HDR, and I would still right click, photo merge, panorama. And I created a panorama based uh, upon these three photos. And um, so that's kind of crazy because I've already showed this in an earlier video. It's what we call an HDR panorama. I used cylindrical, I didn't do the auto crop, and I clicked on merge. Because it takes forever, I've already prepared this, it's actually this one. So I'm gonna reset this one because that's how it looks like. So that's an HDR panorama. It's so simple to make. You make your three HDR, you make your panorama, and you're done. Now, you will get an error message saying this image appears to be damaged. Uh, and I actually spoke uh, when I was at Photoshop World to the Adobe team, and they said that's a bug that's gonna get fixed. But it actually works. You can retouch this photo, you can export it, you can print it, you can do whatever you want with it. You still get this image. If you do an HDR panorama, the image appears to be damaged, but it's not damaged. Anyways, so let's start retouching this photo. And I wanna talk to you about how you, you retouch something like this with the sun on the right. So the, the first thing that I do is I'm gonna open up the shadows as usual. And I, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do my black. Now, you know me, if you follow my tutorials, that usually I go like this, minus 100. But in this case, I'm not gonna do this because look how the sun looks. It's very small, you can see a definite, and I don't think it's very nice. I think if you leave it like this, uh, you know, and I get so many photos where, and it's some of them are even much worse here, where you really see the sun like, like this, very defined. I don't think it's very nice. The sun often, glows us in the eyes, you know, and that's more the feeling that we get from the sun. So don't bring your highlights completely to minus 100. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do my white point. Same thing, white points, you don't want anything, you wanna keep details here. So you do a very low white point. And the key thing on this one is the white balance, but let's first, let's first do the, the cropping here. So I could have, you know, put auto cropping, but I wanted to show you the whole thing from start to finish. So that's my cropping. That's, I think, what about what I did. I'm cutting a bit Miss Portman. Sorry about that, Natalie. Uh, so now I'm also going to do a minus clarity. Why do I do a minus clarity? Because when you open up the shadows to 100%, you, it gives a bit of an unnatural look to your photo. I don't want that. Now the next thing I'm going to do, which is very important, and um, is the white balance, the color of the photo. I'm going to do, I'm basically going to move my, I'm gonna warm up the whole photo to about 6,500 on the temperature, and I'm gonna move my glow to about in the 40s, something like this, okay? But I'm gonna show you something that I've never showed to anybody, it's a little trick. If you go into camera calibration, you can choose your camera calibration here, but you can also go into here, the profiles, and you see here it says red primary. Now when you retouch a sunset or a sun, this one is gonna be very useful. If I move the red primary to the left, it's gonna make the whole photo very red. But if I move it to the right, it's gonna make the whole photo very much yellow, orange, much more like a sun color. 
And I, I spend a lot of time trying to, you know, get my colors kind of right. I want them to be, you know, very saturated, very, uh, you know, like a good sunset. I mean, if you walk in the street and you see some of the sunsets are so red, so saturated, I want that, but I want to stay in something natural. So you can play around with these settings, you know, shadows, green in the shadows, magenta in the shadows, maybe a little bit. This is very powerful. Like if you move it a little bit, it's going to add so much magenta. So you can just go very small. And, you know, this makes it red. Let's just make it yellow. You know, you can even add more saturation. I'm not going to do saturation here. I'm actually going to just add a little bit of vibrance here, maybe around 2021. But you see, for me, it's very important the sun to be like this. Now, to finish this photo, I want to make a little gradient in the sky. So I'm just going to lower. I'm going to go to exposure, and I'm just going to lower this a little bit. I want to close my photo, and I'm going to lower this one. I'm going to make a similar one down below and not straight. I want it to, because of the sunset, I want it to not be straight. Okay. And then I'm going to boost the exposure overall of the photo a little bit, make it brighter, something like this, maybe add a bit of contrast, just a little bit. And voila, an HDR panorama straight into the sun. Now, let me show you some other examples. And uh, this is a photo I actually sold to Nike.com last, was one of my biggest sale ever. And it's a funny story. I told this story over and over, but I was meeting Kelvin, my best friend in LA. And we were, we had an appointment at the observatory. So I drove up and I see that crazy sunset. Like, this is the raw file on retouch. It was so yellow. It was so yellow. You couldn't believe it. And I stopped the car in the middle. I took my camera out. I, I put that 160 of a second because I want to make sure that I'm sharp, wanted a fast speed. I had people were like, uh, uh, you know, honking in the back, wanted me to leave. And I just took that shot, went back in the car. And Nike contacted me and bought the photo for Nike.com last summer. They did like a whole summer thing and they used that photo. And I just moved into Los Angeles and like my first client is Nike. I was so proud. And so you never know when a photo opportunity, but look, look at the raw file. You know, a golden hour sometime in LA, um, more actually in LA than in Paris, sometimes can be so yellow. It's not every day, but that day was like that. This is unretouched. Now I'm just going to open up the shadows a little bit. I'm going to, and I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to bring down the highlights because that's what people do so much. Maybe it's my fault because I always do plus 100 minus 100. I'm going to keep the highlights here. I'm just going to do my blacks and my yellow. And uh, this one is. Um, I don't know what white balance I choose, but I really like this. I think the way I did it for Nikes, I retouch it like this. Now, so it's always important to have your, I'm actually even going to bring higher the highlights. And Matt Wyskowski was showing this with Scott Kelby on the grid a couple of weeks ago. I thought this is so brilliant. People have the tendency to do this and it just makes their sunset so unusual. You got to leave the glow. The only time you don't want to leave the glow, that's a photo I, I shipped two days ago uh, by my home. And by the way, for Sony fans out there, this was shot with a 240 millimeter lens. The uh, Sony came up with a 24 to 240. It's become my go-to lens. I shot this at 233 millimeter. So imagine how much I was zoomed in because I wanted the sun to be big at 160 of a second. But because the Sony A7R has got a 5X stabilization, the photo is not blurry because in the past, when I started photography 12 years ago, we had this rule that whenever you, you know, whatever you use your speed is going to be at least the equivalent of your focal length. So if you shoot at 1 to 100 of a second or 1 to 50, your speed should be at 1 to 50. Now with the Sony 7R, uh, 5X stabilization, um, you, uh, you, you can just basically get it uh, you can shoot, you know, you can violate this rule and like I did, one sixth of a second and it was sharp. The photo is sharp. This is something I couldn't do before the Sony 7R came out because I had very little time. I was right driving home and I see the sun really big. Now, you see we have clouds here over the sun. When you have clouds over the sun, that's the only time where you, you don't have to do this big glow over it. So I'm just going to, you know, bring my blacks. I'm going to do a bit my whites. I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit. And this time I can bring down the highlights, no problem, and add a bit of vibrance. You know, I can totally do that. Probably going to crop the photo because I really want people to see that sun, that crazy sunset. Uh, maybe just make it like this. I really want it to be over the sun. You know, rule of third, you see, this is my golden uh, point. Uh, I'm going to put it over the golden points. And boom, 
maybe add a bit of contrast. So the only time you're going to have a sun that's very different, I mean, it's, it, look, it's, it's my viewpoint. You, you, you can agree or not agree with it, is when you have a lot of clouds over it, then it's very defined, it's very cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little gradient on top because I can and because I'm crazy about gradients just to make that s sunset really pop. Voila. And not so much in the back, but I, I think these houses are not very nice. I'm actually going to crop it even more. But because it's Sony A7R2, uh, uh, you know, I, I still get a lot of pixel. You see, I, I'm still at 7,000 pixel because it's a 42,000 files. So that's when I advise you, you can leave the sun. Now you don't have to follow, you know, you don't have to do what I say all the time, but it's just, you know, what, you know, what has worked for me. Maybe even gonna lower the exposure of this photo. And without that 240 lens, I couldn't do it. So by the way, if you want to see what I'm using, you can go to my website, photosearch.com and click on my gear. And, uh, and if you want to buy anything from B and H or Amazon, please use my gear page. It helps me, uh, you know, do all the free stuff. I'm going to give you free raw files today. I'm going to give you all the raw files to make this photo in Paris, so you can train yourself. If you don't have the money to go to Paris to the top of the terrace at the Galerie Fayette, no worries. I got you covered. I'm giving you the raw files, so you can play with it. Anyways. And here you have all the gear that I'm using, including the Sony SFR2, the Phantom 4. Please use these links if you want to buy anything, uh, any gear. Uh, if you want to buy a Sony A7R2, you can buy it from B&H or Amazon. I've got all the links there. Uh, and you can just use any of these links to buy your camera. And uh, it helps me. I get a small commission and I can do all this free stuff for you. I know some people of you are buying my full courses. And talking about my full courses, I'm going to put again... Uh, the full, full, full ad for my landscape masterclass. If you've seen it, I've been putting it in the last five videos. You can stop the video here because you don't have to see it over or again. It's really the best course I've ever done. I have many people who are finished with the course now telling me that their photos now are going on the homepage of 500px. They were not going before and they're very happy with the progress they've made. I sp it's literally all that I know in 12 years of photography. My landscape masterclass course, it's $148. You can get it for around $58 for a limited time if you buy it now. Here is the full ad for it. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in another episode. All right, so this is my landscape masterclass. Now, this course is a completely uh, new way for me of teaching. I, I've, I've been trying to think how I can improve my tutorials so that you can get more out of it. And, um, you know, I get a lot of emails every day. And the main thing that I'm getting is people sending me their photos and saying, oh, can you check them out? You know, I would love to have your viewpoint on it. Well, and there is something that keeps, there's a few things that keeps on coming back in terms of mistakes, mostly compositions, sometimes uh, too much retouching, or, uh, you know, just different things about, you know, wrong moments of light of doing photos. And I thought I would really do a course that really takes you uh, that's the course I would have dreamed on doing when I started. Um, let me show you uh, what it contains. It's got uh, 11, it's got 48 videos, almost eight hours of training, and it's, it's, it's in the 11 different sections. The section number one is called the definition of photography, where we just really look at what the definition of photography, and I give you a lot of examples so that you can see what I can, you know, what makes a photo being a nice photo, why, why it makes a photo being popular or not. That's really what I go into. Of course, it's my viewpoint, it's my taste, but, you know, we're getting back to basics from what the definition of photography is. Then I'm going to show you my basic setup on how I use exposure composition and how I take my photos. Because taking the right exposure is the, you know, is really the basics of the basics. So I show you an actual live example in Santa Monica in Los Angeles. Uh, then I really go into a different example of what different f-stops you can do and how you can use this for landscape, you know, whether you have something that's close to you or far away from you or you want to get a starlight effect, you know, what f-stop you should use in what different situations. Then we start going into different rule of composition, the rule of third. Uh, the rule of third, playing with leading lines, and I show you a lot of examples of that, framing the frame, uh, foreground, middle ground, background, really tricks that I find over the years really help me get the right composition when I take my photos. And I give you lots of examples on that. Then we're going to go and we're going to do some live uh, example of composition where I have, I'm actually showing you through my camera a lot of different examples of how I compose my photos. And then we're going to go into retouching them. And then I start really getting into the different types of the lights that we, we have, you know. 
uh, how to get how to make a great daylight photo come out with a lot of different examples daylight is really the worst moment to take photos but there are some things you can do like black and white to really get some really cool uh, you know daylight photos then we're going to do daylight special effects because you know daylight is often boring so sometimes special effects is going to help them you know make them pop you know you got a great subject but it was shot in daylight well i'll show you how you can you know do special effects to make that thing really pop that photo really have a nice light despite the light was not that good uh, i'm going to give you a whole bunch of presets that comes for free with the course and that's going to help you with your daylight photos then we go into shooting right into the sun golden hour how do you shoot golden hour how do you set your camera for golden hour how do you retouch golden hour i'm going to show you an amazing app i did a full tutorial on photo peels it's a great app which you can use to find when is the sun going to be where exactly. If you want to plan a photo and you want to get the sun between two buildings or above a specific bridge, well, you can use this app to find out which time of the year that's going to be. Super useful app, amazing app, photo peels. Then we get into the sunset. You know, how do we use our camera to capture the sunset properly? How to get a right exposure and how to retouch sunsets. I'm going to give you a lot of examples. Blue hour can be amazing. Same thing, I'm going to give you live example of Blue Hours photos, how I frame them, how I retouch them. Different things, how to get a very natural look on the Blue Hour. Uh, then I'll show you a really cool app called Salt that I use every day to find when is the right time to shoot photos. Then we're going to go into HDR, and this course has a lot of HDR. I've completely updated my HDR workflow, and I'm going to show you how you can use HDR FX Pro, which is free, to get some really cool HDR. I'm going to show you how to set up your camera, uh, I'm going to show you how to use AGI Fix Pro on three different projects. Then I'm going to show you how to use Aurora HDR on four different projects, which I think is the best HDR software out there. Uh, and then all the photos we did in HDR, I'm going to take them back in Lightroom and make them a natural version of it. So I can compare the HDR version with the natural version. Then we're going to go into one of the most powerful uh, technique there is for a landscape for a natural result is digital blending and you know how to blend different exposures to get the photo you really want to have give you two example on this then I'm going to do a lot of live examples of shooting for lone exposure using ND filters in New Zealand in Paris and in Venice how I've been using this to you know get some cool lone exposure effects and how to retouch them we're going to go into super long exposure, five to eight minutes exposure. How do you do long exposure when you don't have a filter? How to properly shoot a panorama, how to hold your camera to make a great panorama. And then we're going to go into different types of retouching of panoramas, including some of my most favorite panorama ever. Then I'm going to show you a whole workflow on how to do astrophotography, how and where to find the Milky Way exactly how to do your camera settings and then we're going to do different astrophotography projects together shooting the milky way all this of course comes as usual with source files but the big new thing about this course is that i have a checklist what the checklist is going to give you is two things it's going to give you a sequence of study how do you go from easier to more complex projects but also it's going to give you assignments I'm going to ask you to go, okay, now you learn about lone exposure, go do a lone, a 5 second lone exposure, a 20 second, a 30 second using an ND filter, uh, a variable ND filter, a fixed ND filter, and then I'm going to ask you to post your photos on Instagram with a specific hashtag so that I can see your progress and how you're applying the videos and how you're learning, but also so that you can look for these hashtags and see how everybody else is doing, you know, and, and doing their lone exposure and doing the SGR. So so you can check for the hashtags and see what other students are doing. Also, and that's not out yet, but next month I will be taking under my wing 20 to 25 photographers using this course uh, on a special one-to-one -one project where I will ask you to send me the photos you've been taking as part of this course and I will coach you on them, tell you if you made it or not, and at the end you can graduate from it. For now, this will be limited to 20 to 25 photographers and I'm going to talk about this next month if you're interested you can always send me an email on, on my website uh, and there is already a waiting list for that because it's only limited to 20 to 25 photographers on the planet for now where I really want to coach you through this course 
And at the end, you're going to get an actual diploma where you graduated from the landscape masterclass. And once you graduated from the landscape masterclass, you can come to a special Facebook group where I will be doing career coaching every week with a different photographer. And you can see how I coach them because I will be recording the videos. But this will be only for the people who graduated this, this course. So stay tuned for that. That's not out yet. Uh, but the course is out. You can purchase it and you can start getting into it. And, you know, I really think I... Did the best course I ever did because I give really a lot of examples from shooting to retouching uh, on gradients, you know, from easy project to harder and harder and harder. This is all I know, guys. This is all I've learned in 12 years. Uh, my work is in 85 galleries around the world. I've done two fine arts books. I'm doing a third one now. There are pretty best sellers around the planet. And I'm not, doing, I'm not saying this to show off. I'm just saying this. I've had the success with this. I've seen over the years things that I work and things that don't. Well, I'm going to share you all my secrets, all the things that works. I'm really excited about this course. If there's only one course you ever want to buy from me, it's this one, the Landscape Masterclass. All right, guys, see you in one of my training videos.